Here we are again. Ah, I'm so glad that you are here joining me this evening. Um, welcome. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Amanda McIntyre, and uh, this is the Ollie Yoga class. Um, this is a class that's put on by UVM's uh, Continuing and Distance Education Program uh, through OLLI, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. And we're making this opportunity free to anybody uh, who wants to participate. So um, I'm really glad that you're here. Um, this is a this is meant to be a beginner's class, and I've had some feedback from people saying, "Boy, that that wasn't easy." And beginner and easy is not always uh, synonymous, but this is a beginner class. It's meant to be for everybody, um, and I'm trusting you to use your own judgment and your own wisdom as we go through class tonight. So, if your knee is bothering you, if your PT told you not to lift your arm up above your head, don't do that. Uh, really make this practice your own. And you know, if your hips are really tight and you want to do something that's a little bit more opening than what I'm offering up, you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, this is a practice for you to do whatever it is that you need to during this hour together, whether it's energize, relax, stretch, find breath, uh, or all of those things. Um, <clears throat> So I'm really glad that you're here. And it's a really dreary day in Vermont, for those of you who are here to, in Vermont. Uh, I was at home. I work from home presently. And when I look out my back door, it's what we call stick season right now. Because uh, when it's like springtime, there's beautiful, lush greenery when you look out my back door. But right now, it's just scrubs and sticks and no buds and just sort of like a, a thicket sort of a thing. Um, as is expected this time of year. But really exciting, uh, at the end of last week, we noticed a crocus was growing amidst all these sticks and debris and everything in our backyard. Just one tiny little crocus popping out of the ground. And so, you know, of course, because we're uh, living in a world where all these little things are even more exciting at home, uh, my partner and I have been checking it out and getting closer to it and watching when it opens and when it closes and trying to figure out where it came from. Because we've never, we've never had any flowers growing back there. It's really quite a, uh, a brown stick-filled area. So this is like this little bit of beauty. Uh, and what's really amazing about this crocus is that it is really, really well rooted. So it is firmly connected to the ground and then it's pointing upward and then whenever there's just a little bit of sunlight, it starts to move just a little bit towards where the sun is because we don't have much sun exposure in the back. Over the weekend, it snowed and rained and right now it's windy. And that little bad boy is going back and forth and still looking incredibly beautiful, um, but holding its own. And I just find that to be so, uh, just like exactly what it is that we need right now, right? It's this idea of grounding ourselves um, in creating this ability for us to um, be strong and to be able to grow. And a lot of us are sort of at that place right now where we're feeling like, I don't know what's going on. There's a lot of all kinds of different things. Things are a little upside down. Um, and creating a firm base uh, is a great place to start because once you have that firm, solid um, footing beneath you, that's when you're able to really grow and really able to take off. It's similar in the yoga practice, in this physical practice that we do together. Uh, yoga is not about putting your leg behind your head or being able to touch the floor with your hands with straight legs. It's, it isn't about that at all. It's about connecting to yourself. And in that physical practice, it's about creating grounded stability in the base. And your base is whatever's connected to the floor. So usually it's your feet, but it could be your hips, your hands, your back. Um, so in yoga, we're always starting with really grounding, finding as much steadiness as we can connected to the earth, and then build the posture from there. And that's where we find growth, lengthening, and space. So I want to offer up that idea for you tonight as we go through our practice. Um, this idea of rooting down in a really grounded way in order to create growth, uh, in order to find length and space. And of course, as always, I will guide you through this practice. Uh, and we call this notion in yoga, we call it from root to rise, which is kind of a cool term. It makes me think of uh, sap flowing this time of year. Uh, but it's the idea that we're really grounded and connected to this energy beneath us. 
and then we tap into it, pulling it all the way up the body, up through the crown of the head, creating that um, tall, stable, open spine. So I hope you join me in this root to rise idea tonight and begin by finding a comfortable seat, uh, whatever that looks like for you. And so maybe um, it's on blocks or on a blanket or just right on your mat. And your legs can be crossed. You can always have your knees bent with your feet flat on the floor or the legs extended. But remember this idea that I'm talking about of uh, rooting down so that you can rise up. So make sure that whatever position it is that you're sitting in, that the base is really solid. So is the weight even between both of your hips? It helps to pull the fleshy part of a little way to find some more stability there. So feel whatever is connected to the floor, rooting down, grounding down with gravity, pulling you and connecting you. Have your hands on your knees or thighs and find a nice tall spine extending the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. And then close your eyes or bring them to a soft gaze as you allow yourself to arrive in this seat. And of course, if you find that you need to make some adjustments because this isn't feeling right in a particular Heart, please feel free to do that. But envision yourself sitting here, not unlike this little brave crocus in my backyard. Hips rooting down, grounding into the earth, holding you stable and steady. You can find security in knowing that this connection exists and allowing your weight to really pour into the floor, allow the crown of the head to reach up towards the ceiling, creating length on both sides of the neck and on both sides of the torso. And begin to connect with your breath here, allowing the chest and belly to rise and fall. with every inhale, sitting up a little bit taller and a little bit brighter in your seat with every exhale, feeling this rooting sensation through your hips, your feet, and anything that's connected to the floor. Allow your shoulders to be relaxed on your back and your stomach just slightly engaged. Bring your awareness to your tailbone rooted and connected into whatever you're sitting in. And with this idea of root to rise, begin to bring this idea of energy from the tailbone all the way up the spine, allowing you to sit up a little taller. Energy rises up through the back of the neck and out through the crown of the head. So you're stable through the lower body, extending up through the upper body. And bring your palms together in prayer position in front of your heart. We'll begin our practice tonight by chanting the sound of Om together. And we'll just chant it one time. And you can chant as loudly or as quietly as you would like. Take a full exhale. And a deep inhale for Om. Oh. 
Release your hands down to your knees or thighs and gently let your eyes flutter open as you still sit up nice and tall and rooted in this seat. Keep your shoulders gently nestled on the back and extend the arms out to your sides, palms facing straight ahead. On an inhale, let the fingertips lift, let the gaze lift. Connect your hands as you exhale and bring them down to your heart. We'll do that a couple more times. Inhale, we're rooted through the hips, rising the energy up through the fingertips. Take a look up. Exhale and hands come to heart center. Inhale once again and rise up. Keep the shoulders relaxed, the ribs tucked in. Exhale and hands come to your heart. One more time, a nice wide sweeping of the arms, letting the energy lift, letting the breath lift. Connect the hands and bring them back to heart center. Nice. Bring your hands to your knees or thighs. Keep sitting up nice and tall. And then bring your right fingertips behind you. If they connect to the floor, that's great. If not, low back is fine. And left hand comes to the opposite leg for a gentle twist. So again, your right hand is either connected to the floor behind you or to your low back. Left hand is on the opposite knee. Since I'm sitting up on blocks, I find it difficult for my right hand to connect to the floor. But that might not be your experience. Exhale back to center, other side. Left hand comes to the floor behind you or the low back. Right hand is on the opposite knee as you twist to the left. Exhale to unwind back to center. And then extend your legs straight out in front of you. If you're sitting on blocks, I recommend removing them. Um, a blanket might be a nice thing to sit on. But we're going to come to Dandasana, or staff pose. And Dandasana, pull the fleshy part away from your sits bones, again, so you can really root down. So feel the hips connected to the earth. And let your fingertips or palms be on the either, either side of each hip. Flex your feet so that they're nice and active. And if you need a little bend in your knees, that's fine. Root down through your hips, and then as you inhale, extend up through the crown of your head, so lengthening the spine. As open as you can be, inhale and float the arms up overhead. Keep the ribs tucked in. Keep the belly tucked in. Hips stay rooted as you exhale, hinge forward, and release your hands wherever is comfortable. So maybe it's feet, ankles, or shins. But find a nice long spine. So neck is nice and long, shoulders are down. Hips are still rooted in the mat. And with every inhale, you're going to lengthen the spine. So rising up through the hips as you exhale. Maybe sink a little bit deeper if that feels OK for your body tonight. Walk your hands in as the torso rises up. And then bend your right knee, placing the foot flat on the floor, and wrap your hands around the shin. And then use your hands around the shin to help prop you up so you can sit up nice and tall, root to rise. So your hips are rooted down on the floor. As you inhale, you're rising up through the spine. And then keeping your left hand on the bent knee, as you inhale, sweep the right arm behind you. See if you can twist and turn your head to look at your right thumb. As you exhale, gently unwind back to center. And remember, this doesn't have to be your deepest twist ever. We're just waking up the spine. Extend your right leg out. Bend the left knee, placing the left foot on the floor. Hands go around the shin to help you sit up nice and tall. Feel your hips rooted. Right hand stays on the knee. As you inhale, sweep the left arm behind you for a twist, seeing if you can turn the upper body to look at the left hand behind you. Make sure you're breathing fully here. And then exhale to unwind back to center. Come to a wide-legged seat. And as I always like to say to my students, it does not have to be the widest seat you've ever done. For some of us, as soon as we say here wide seat or anything, we want to do it like as intense as possible. You're welcome to do that. But really, I'm looking for you to sit with your legs at an open angle and toes pointing towards the ceiling, knees pointing towards the ceiling, really rooted down through the hips as you rise up through the crown of your head. 
And then turn your torso so that it's aligned with the right leg. Reach your arms up overhead as you exhale. We're going to hinge at the hips, reaching towards the right leg, keeping the torso in alignment with the extended leg. Reach through your fingertips to bring your arms back up to center. Make sure you're still rooted down in the hips, rising up through the fingertips. Turn the torso towards the left leg. As you exhale, hinge forward and free your hands wherever feels comfortable on the side. Make sure that right hip especially stays rooted. It has a tendency to want to pull up here. Reach the fingertips, inhale to come back up to center, and then release your hands down to the floor. Bring the soles of your feet together for cobbler pose or baddha konasana. And your feet can be as close to your body or as far away as you would like. That's really up to you on what's most comfortable. But use your hands to grab a hold of the shins or ankles and sit up nice and tall. Now also in this posture, we're not concerned about how far the knees are from the floor. What we're looking for right now is to start to get an opening in the inner thighs and a nice long spine. So we're rooted down through the hips, extending up through the crown of the head. I'm holding on to my ankles here and then I'm gonna do a little bit of a back bend. So I'm holding on, opening up the chest, opening up through the neck as I look up. Nice, and then gently come back to center. Use your hands to guide the knees together, and then we're gonna scoot around into all fours in a tabletop position. And this is a great opportunity to cushion your knees if you need to, to elevate the heels of your hands. Uh, and remember, if you're working with a wrist injury that really makes this uh, difficult, there are options of coming onto your forearms or using fists, so do feel free to experiment if you fall into that category. But we've got the shoulders over the wrists and then the hands walked forward a couple of inches. We've got the hips over the knees for a little bit of cat-cow. So as you inhale, we're going to drop the belly, drop the chest, and lift the gaze up towards the ceiling for cow pose. As you exhale, you're going to pull the belly in, start to tip the pelvis, round the shoulders up, hollow the chest out, cat pose. Inhale, tip the pelvis, drop the belly, drop the chest, and look up towards the ceiling. Exhale, press into the hands, tuck the tailbone, pull the belly in, hollow the chest, press the shoulder blades up. And then just do a couple more of these in your own time and your own breath. You can go more quickly or more slowly. And remember, your hands and your knees and feet or what's grounded in this posture. So feel that connection as you move the energy along your spine. After your next exhale, come back to a neutral spine, flat back. Make sure your stomach muscles are slightly engaged. All right, so we've got the left hand firmly rooted. Strong and steady, extend your right arm directly out in front of you. Now maintain that, and we're going to extend the left leg directly behind. So you're pressing in to the heel of the left hand. Your right knee and shin and toes are connected to the floor. That's the root that's pressing you into the earth. Keep that steadiness, and then reach the fingertips towards me. Press the sole of your left foot towards the back wall for that extra bit of space. Nice job. Keep breathing here. And lower your hand and knee back down to the floor. And take any movements here that will feel good and nourishing. So for some of us, movement in the hips can be nice. Uh, for others, doing some movement with the wrist um, can be helpful. So take any movements you like or a child's pose. And then come back to meet me in tabletop, all fours. All right. Feel your right hand rooted and grounded. Extend the left arm directly out in front of you, nice and steady. Thumb is up. Keep your abdominal muscles nice and tight, and then gently extend the right leg directly behind you at hip height. You're pressing into the heel of the right hand. 
your left knee and shin and toes are connected to the floor as you reach your left fingertips more towards me. Extend the back foot further back. All right, lower the hand and knee back down to the floor. Again, take any movement that might feel good here in the hips, wrists, whatever you like. Bring the big toes together, let your knees be wide, and move the hips back to come on into child's pose or balasana. Fingertips are reaching towards the top of the mat. If you can, try to connect your forehead to the floor. In child's pose, we're rooted through the hands and the arms, the forehead and the shins. Feel this grounded connection. As you inhale, make your way back up to tabletop, all fours. Walk your knees back a few inches. Walk your hands forward a couple inches. Tuck your toes, and we're going to come into plank, top of a push-up. So in plank, we've got the shoulders over the wrists. Core is engaged, and your body's in one straight line. This is literally like you're at the top of a push-up. You're looking out on the floor ahead of your mat, so the neck is nice and long. And everything is tucked in around the abdominals and the glutes. Keep your hands and feet where they are and push your hips up and back to downward dog. So that means pushing into the hands, shifting your weight a bit. And in down dog, your hands are shoulder width apart or wider. Feet are hips distance apart and your body is sort of in this triangle shape. Pedal the feet out here a little bit. And then come to stillness with the legs. And walk your feet up towards your hands so that you come to a forward fold at the top of your mat. So for forward fold, your feet are hips distance apart and parallel. You're hinged forward at the hips, and your legs are as straight as they can be. But if they need to be bent, by all means, do that. So your forward fold might look like hands connected to the floor or shins, or your forward fold might be something more where you're resting your forearms on your thighs. It really depends on um, where your body is at with this posture tonight. So choose whatever variation that you like. And then wherever you're at, bring your hands to your hips. So find the top of your hip crest. Make a nice firm connection like you're rooting yourself down. So you're holding your feet, um, you're pressing your weight down through your feet into the floor. And come on up to standing. So check it out. I've got my hands right on top of my hip crest, pressing down. I'm open through the chest. So I've got this rootedness through the lower body that allows me to grow through the upper body. So find yourself up at the top of your mat, wherever that might be. And again, we have our feet hips distance apart and parallel. Tadasana is this ultimate root to rise posture. So we start with our awareness um, and the soles of our feet. So bring your hands to your hips, a little soft bend in the knees. Lift all your toes up. Notice how you've got this connection with the three edges of uh, your feet and gently let your toes relax back down on the mat. And then begin to let some energy come up through the legs. And by energy, I mean engage the muscles here. That means some lift on the inner arches, some engagement through the calves, the knees, and the thighs, engagement in the abdominal muscles, and then arms down by my sides. Extend the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. And then envision this idea of root to rise, so drawing the energy and strength upward through the feet, through the legs, and up the crown of your head. Inhale to float your fingertips up. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold all the way forward. Inhale up halfway to a flat back. So in this posture, feet are still hips distance apart, knees are bent. Bring your hands to your thighs and tuck your elbows in. Super strong and rooted in the legs. And then we're going to find some space and bring some energy to the spine. So actively press your hands into your thighs, your thighs into your hands as you extend the crown of the head towards me and your tailbone towards the back of the room. Make sure you can really breathe fully here. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold all the way forward, Uttanasana. 
and then bend your knees, inhale, reach your arms wide, bringing the arms all the way up overhead. Connect your hands and bring them to heart center. Nice, you can release that. Check out your feet, make sure that they're still hips distance apart and parallel and that you've got some active uh, strength and intention going on in the legs. Engage your abdominal muscles. So I'll give you a little side view of that. Still active in the legs, but you're going to stick your tailbone out so that you can engage your lower abdominal muscles. So pulling them in right below the belly button. Sometimes it helps to poke at them. And then once you've got that, neutralize the spine so that the tailbone's more towards the floor. That makes this really strong and locks in the upper abs. And then we straighten the legs and you should feel really solid through the center. Nice. Excellent, stand up nice and tall. We're rooted down through the feet, rising up through the crown of the head. Inhale and float your arms up. And we have the arms sort of at a V. Imagine that you're holding like a big beach ball. Again, rooting down through the feet as you inhale, extending up through the fingertips. And then strong and steady, as we lengthen through the spine, we're going to arch over towards the right side. Now we're holding a beach ball. Imagine we're also arching over a beach ball on the right side. So you may find it easy to kind of collapse over, but we're looking for space and strength here. Inhale to come back up to center. All right, remember, root to rise. So root down through the feet, get strong in the belly. Inhale to lengthen, and then exhale, we're arching over to the left side. Holding on to a ball, arching over the side of a ball. Lots of space. Nice. Inhale and come back up to center. A little bit of a back bend one more time. And bring your hands to heart center. Nice job. You can release that. If it feels good to shake it out, drink some water, do that. And when you're ready, find yourself up at the top of your mat in mountain pose once again. And anytime we're in mountain pose, we're looking for that engagement from the lifting of the inner arches all the way through the legs, through the core, so that we're standing up super strong, uh, just like my crocus in my backyard. So wind might make us sway a little bit, but that's all because we're so rooted, right? Bring your awareness to your left foot and begin to shift your weight, freeing the weight from the right foot and come on up to your right toe. So we've got most of the weight on the left foot and some weight on the right toe. Now this might be a good place for you tonight to work on trying to get that foot off of the floor, maybe creating some space to really strengthen through the left leg. If you're feeling really rooted through that left leg tonight, maybe you're able to get your right knee up to hip height. If you're able to do that, bring your hands around the shin and then really let yourself rise up through your chest. Now, if you're looking at me right now thinking, yeah, I'm nowhere close to doing that tonight, that is totally fine. That's the whole point of this practice, right? So we want to have a real strong, steady foundation in order to get up a little bit higher and a little taller. So tonight, if you're working right here, trying to be super strong, steady, and grounded in the left leg, perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. All right, if you're holding on to the knee, release it, and everyone lower your right foot down to the floor. And take any movements you need to to shake it out. But remember, anytime we're doing these balance postures, not just in this particular class, but any yoga class, uh, is we're trying to start with a really solid, grounded base. That's how you know that you're doing what's right for you. So, other side, bring your awareness to your right foot. Stand up nice and tall, strong in the core. That's going to help with the balance and begin to shift your weight into the right foot as you come on up to your left toe. And stand up tall and strong here. Feel yourself really rooted through the right foot. And then you decide what this side's going to be like for you. It might be totally different than the other side. And if you're able to, maybe you can even get your knee up to hip height. If you're able to do that, Experiment with bringing your hands around the shin and notice if that helps you rise up a little bit more. But remember, wherever you're at is perfect, especially if you're staying really grounded in that right foot. A couple more breaths. 
All right, wherever you're at, gently lower the left foot down to the floor. Shake it out a little bit. All right, nice job. Uh, step the right foot back for warrior two. All right, now in warrior two, we're using the majority of the mat. So this is a pretty significant lunge. Your back foot's parallel to the back of the mat, and your front heel aligns with the back arch. You then bend into the front knee, so the back leg is straight. And then pause for a moment, because we're talking about rooting down. So notice the connection between your feet and the floor right now, and how strong you are in your legs. We're going to keep that and inhale the arms up to a T. So the shoulders and hips are facing the long side of your mat. You're going to keep all this and turn your head to look over the front hand, which is your left hand. Soften the muscles of your face. Let your shoulders relax and let the weight of the upper body pour down into your hips, knees, and out into the feet so that you're really rooted down. And then with that heaviness in the low body, allow yourself to be a little bit taller through the back of the spine and the neck. All right, so we're going to try to keep the lower body uh, as still and steady as we can. As you inhale, let the right fingertips go down the back leg and reach the left arm up. Take a look up. As you inhale, come back to warrior two. As you exhale, you're going to bring the front elbow to the front knee, reach the right fingertips over the back of the head for side angle pose. Very little weight in this front arm. We're going to do this a few more times, staying really strong and steady in the lower body, so grounded in the roots, and then flowing in the upper body. So inhaling to come to warrior two, exhaling to flow back to exalted warrior. Right hand is on the back leg, left hand is lifted. Inhale to come back to warrior two. Exhale, bring the front elbow to the front thigh, reach the right fingertips over the top of the mat for side angle. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, right hand goes down the back leg. Very little weight there. Your strength is in the core and in your legs. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, side angle pose. And last time, inhale to come back to warrior two. Nice job. Bring your hands to your hips. Kick off your back foot and come on up to the top of your mat. If it feels good to shake it out a little bit, do that. But the idea with that flow is to get really solid and rooted in the legs and the lower body, really maintaining the strength and grounded there and then allowing the upper body to flow. So we'll try the other side. Left foot goes back for warrior two. Take the time to set up a nice grounded base. Back foot's parallel to the back of the mat. Front heel aligns with the back arch. You're bending into the front knee and the back leg is straight. Shoulders and hips are facing the long edge of the mat. As you inhale, reach your arms out to a T. And then turn your head to take a look over your right hand. Letting the shoulders be relaxed. Letting the weight pour all the way down into your strong legs and feet. Relax the muscles of your face and of your shoulders. Let the left hand go down the back leg, flip the right palm. You're still bending into the front knee, and if you can, look up towards your lifted hand for exalted warrior. Now remember, any time if looking up makes you feel dizzy or queasy, look straight ahead or towards the floor rather than towards the ceiling. Inhale to come back to warrior two. Exhale this time, the elbow comes to the front thigh, and the back fingertips reach over the top of the mat for side angle pose. Very light in the front arm. Make sure the muscles of the legs are engaged and we're going to flow through this. So inhale to come to warrior two. Exhale, exalted warrior. Right arm lifts up. Left fingertips are down the back leg. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, front elbow comes to the front thigh. Reach through the back hand. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, exalted warrior. Inhale, warrior two. Last time coming forward to side angle pose. Inhale to come back up to warrior two. Nice job. Bring your hands to your hips. 
kick off the back foot and come on up to the top of your mat. And again, shake it out a little bit if that feels good. All right. So come to, a, come to the middle of your mat and come to a wide stance. So you'll notice my feet are on the outer edges uh, of the mat. And I'm going to scoot the feet out a little bit so it's a little bit wider. Yeah, I'd say in a few inches off the either side of the mat. Stand up nice and tall. Let the shoulders be relaxed. Extend your arms out to your sides with the thumbs up. And your toes are pointed at uh, 45 degree angles, so they're not quite parallel to the edges of the mat. This is five pointed star. Feel your feet rooting down into the floor as you rise up through the crown of your head. A little bit of a back bend, arching back. Inhale to come back up to center. Reach your arms up to a V. So now your body's more in the shape of an X. Feel your feet rooted as your fingertips rise up. On an exhale, come into a squat. Bring your elbows in. Engage your biceps. Create fists with your hands nice and strong. Root down through the feet. Inhale and rise up. Expand out. Lots of space. Exhale, press into the feet, bring the elbows in nice and strong in the center. Inhale to rise. Exhale, nice and strong, coming on into a squat. A couple more breaths here. Last time, inhale, press into the feet, reach the arms nice and wide. Bring your hands to your hips, heel toe your feet together, and then make your way up to the top of your mat and find mountain pose. Nice. Release your arms down by your sides. Get really active in the legs and in the core. Feel your feet pressing down. Energy is pulling all the way up from the earth, coming out the crown of your head. Inhale and let the arms float up. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold all the way forward. Step your right foot back to a lunge. Now, in this lunge, your hands can be connected to the floor or to blocks, whichever you'd like. But you're bending into the front knee, and the back leg is straight, the back heel is lifted, and your feet are hip width apart. Nice and strong, bring your hands to your front thigh. If you need to adjust once you get here, do that. So if you come up and you think, oh gosh, this is a really big lunge, scoot your back toes in a little bit, or scoot your left foot more towards the edge of the mat. Bring your hands to your hips and rise on up. Once again, check in with yourself here. How does this feel? If this isn't feeling steady for you, maybe you need to scoot your back toes back more, move the left foot more to the edge. Inhale and reach the arms up overhead. We're really getting into the right hip here, really sinking down through the hips. And if you can, a little bit of a back bend. Notice how that affects your balance, but remember we're really rooted through the feet. All right, inhale to come back to center. Bring your hands to your heart. Bring your fingertips towards the floor or blocks and step your back foot forward, coming to a forward fold. Bring your hands to your hips, root yourself down, and come on up to standing. Whoa, rising up in a lunge like that is not an easy thing. That's why we're doing it towards the end of class tonight. Um, but it really embodies this idea of rooting down in order to be able to rise up. So you're using the strength in your legs and in your abdomen to lift the rest of you up. So be kind to yourself. It's not easy. Um, do the best that you can and take a break when you need to. Find mountain pose up at the top of your mat once again. As you inhale, float the arms up. Shoulders are relaxed, you're strong in the core. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold forward. Step your left foot back to a lunge. And then again, while we're here, make any adjustments you need to. Hands can be on the floor or blocks. If you need to scoot your right foot more towards the edge for a wider base, do that. 
Make sure your abdominals are engaged, that your glutes are engaged, and bring your hands to your front thigh. Nice. And then again, if there's any adjustments you need to to make this feel more rooted through the front foot, through the back toes, do that. Because we need to be able to root down to rise. Inhale, press into the feet, come on up. Nice. If you want to get more into the left hip, uh, hip flexor, you can scoot the left toes back a little bit more. Strong and steady, a little bit of a back bend if you'd like, opening up through the collarbones, squeezing in at the thighs. As you inhale, come back to center. Bring your hands to your heart. Hands come to the hips, kick off the back foot. Come on up to the top of your mat, shake it out a little bit. Nice job. All right. So, bring your awareness to both feet as you stand up nice and tall. We couldn't possibly do a root to rise yoga class without some sort of a tree. So let's make sure that we do that before we start to cool down tonight. Bring your awareness and attention to your left foot. Feel it pressing actively into the floor. And if you can, envision roots like going down from your foot into the ground. Now for some of us, that idea totally doesn't work. So if you're like, no, I don't want to envision roots, that's fine. But for some of us, that can be a really powerful image. So we're pressing roots into the ground as you stand up nice and tall on that left foot. You're freeing the right foot, placing it either against the ankle, the calf, or the inner thigh if you're feeling um, really grounded in that left foot tonight. We're avoiding the knee because that's the one place that we want to go but is not always the safest. But wherever you're at, make sure you're pressing the foot into the leg, the leg into the foot, and bring your palms together at your heart. Feel the roots and strength of your left leg and foot pressing down into the floor as you make yourself a little bit taller, extending the crown of the head up towards the ceiling, keeping the palms together. See if you can bring your arms up overhead. If you fall out of your tree, remember you can always come back in it. And do remember that trees sway in the wind, which is kind of like my little crocus does, and that's what we want. We want things that are, are able to bend rather than break. Bring your hands down to heart center. Bring the right knee forward, lower the foot to the floor, shake it out a little bit. And then we'll find the other side, which might be a completely different story. So stand up nice and tall. Bring your awareness to your right foot. Get really active in the right leg. And root down, beginning to shift the weight freeing your left foot to go wherever makes sense on this side. It might be a totally different spot, but we're doing either the ankle, the calf, or the inner thigh. Pressing the foot into the leg, the leg into the foot, as stable as you can be, and bring your palms together at heart center when you found your tree. Some days we have better stability and balance than others. That's why we keep practicing yoga so that we can do this on the mat and also in our worlds. Keep your palms together. See if we can bring the arms up overhead. Lots of space between the ears and the shoulders. Keep the ribs tucked. Make sure you're breathing and that you're really giving yourself credit for trying this out, especially if this is really challenging you. All right, bring your hands to heart center. Let the knee come forward, lower the foot, and shake it out a little bit. All right, nice job. Find mountain pose one more time. Feel your feet grounded and rooted. Gather this idea of energy coming up through the soles of the feet, all the way up the spine, up through the crown of the head. Inhale, let the arms float up like we're reaching for the sun. Maybe it'll be out there tomorrow. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold all the way forward. Let your head relax. Let the shoulders relax. And 
And then from here, work your way back to plank, top of a push-up. So maybe you need to come onto your knees first. Maybe you can just walk the feet back. But we want to have nice straight legs, strong in the abdomen and the shoulders over the wrists. Take a couple of breaths here, knowing you can always drop your knees if you need to. Press into the hands and move your hips up and back to downward dog, keeping your hands and feet in the same place as they are for plank. Lower both knees down to the floor. Cushion them if you need to. And step your right foot forward to a low lunge. Make sure that your legs are hips width apart. We're rooted down in the front foot, rooted through the back knee, back toes. Gently shift the weight in the hips forward here. And you decide. So for some of us, we really want to go forward to get open through this left uh, quad and hip flexor. For others, that might be too much. So you use your wisdom. Inhale and reach the arms up. Bring your hands to heart center. And then left hand stays on the knee. As you inhale, sweep the right arm behind you for a twist. See if you can look behind the right shoulder. Unwind back to center, and we'll switch sides. So bring the right knee back as you step the left foot forward, coming into low lunge again, cushioning the back knee if you need to. Make sure you're standing up nice and tall, engaged in the abdomen, shoulders on the back. Bring your hands to your hips. As you exhale, shift the weight forward, opening up through the right quad and hip flexor. Inhale to float the arms up overhead. And remember, what you're doing in this posture right now might look different than what I'm doing. So if you need to be back a little further or go even deeper, do that. Exhale, hands come to your heart. And then right hand comes to the knee. Inhale to sweep the left arm behind you for a twist. Exhale to unwind back to center. Bring your hands down to the floor, bring the knees behind you, and make your way into child's pose. So in this child's pose, we're going to have the knees wide, the feet together, and extend the arms straight out. If you can connect your forehead to the mat, go for it. If it doesn't quite connect, that might be a nice place to use a blanket or a block. Feel all of these different points of your body rooting down into your mat. As if your hands are on a piano keyboard, begin to work your way over to the right. So it's like you're playing the piano all the way over to the right side. You're working your way off the mat. So both of your hands are off the mat, even though you're still in child's pose. Take your left hand, place it on the right hand, and pull the left hip back. Rooting down through the hands and through the knees to create space through the left side of the body. And then work your way through center and over to the other side. So we're on the piano keyboard, working our way off the left edge of the mat. Right hand connects to the top of the left hand. Pull the right hip back. Gently make your way back to center. And then come on up, scooting around to a seat. Extend both legs straight out in front of you. Palms or fingertips on either side. Root down through the hips as you rise up through the crown of your head. Maybe your legs are a little straighter this time than they were at the beginning. Inhale and let the fingertips lift. Shoulders are relaxed. Ribs are tucked in. Root through the hips. Inhale to rise up through the spine and then hinge forward. Paschimottanasana. Reach through the hands. Inhale to come all the way up. And release. Bend your right knee, placing the foot flat on the floor like we did in the beginning. Now I talked about this idea of being rooted. So Anytime we go into a posture, whatever's connected to the floor, we want to stay rooted so that we can rise up and stay strong and steady.
So in this posture, I'm going to give you one option. Right now, I'm really well rooted in the foot and in this leg. Now you can stay here, or if you want a different bit of a challenge, you can try crossing the leg, placing the foot on the other side. The trick is to keep this foot rooted and to keep both of these hips rooted. So if you find that you have to go like this in order to do that, you're not as grounded. You can get there with practice. But So I want to provide the opportunity, if you're able to connect the foot, to do that. Otherwise, it's nice to have the foot uh, on the inside of the leg. We're going to bring the right hand behind, left arm on the outside of the bent knee as we twist. Left fingertips are pointing towards the right hip. Feel yourself rooting down through the hips. As you inhale, lengthen your spine, rising up. And then on an exhale, see if you can twist a little bit further. Gently unwind back to center. Extend the right leg out and bring the left knee in. And once again, you can either have the foot nice and securely planted on the inside of the leg, or for something a little different, you can try crossing the legs. Just make sure that the hips and foot stay rooted. And you can do it differently on this side than you did on the other side, because maybe this side's more rooted. So you're rooted down through the hips. As you inhale, you rise up through the spine. Left hand comes behind you. Right hand on the outside of the bent knee as you twist towards the left. As you ex exhale, unwind back to center. Extend both legs out and make your way onto your back. So we're going to lay down. And uh, if you're in a space that has overhead lights, this can be a nice time to dim the lights and make the space a little bit more yours. But we're going to begin by laying down on the floor. Find a nice long spine here. So shoulders are nestled down on the back. Hips are connected to the floor. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh for a reclined pigeon. And then bring the legs in towards the body. And hands go around the left thigh or shin, depending on how open you're feeling tonight. Your feet are flexed, and we're really trying to open up through the hips. So you're in control. Use your breath. Decide how close you want to pull the legs towards the body. Release both feet to the floor, and then cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Bring the legs in towards the body again. Hands go around the right thigh or shin. And if it feels like your thigh or shin are very far away, this can be a nice place for a strap or a scarf to find more length. Exhale to release. Hug both knees in towards your chest and gently rock from side to side and front and back. Place your left foot on the floor. Extend your right foot up towards the ceiling. Pull the leg a little bit closer to the body. Breathe into the back of the hamstring, the back of the knee. Hug your right knee in towards your chest. Extend the left leg straight out on the mat, flexing the left foot. And reach your right arm out to a T. With your left hand, guide the bent knee across the body. See if you can keep your shoulders rooted in the mat. But we're stacking the right hip over the left, so only one hip is connected. Unwind back to center, bringing both knees in towards the chest. Place the right foot on the floor as you extend the left foot up towards the ceiling. Pull the leg a little closer to the body. You can have your hands around the thigh or up more towards the shin. Hug the left knee in towards the chest. Extend the right leg straight out on the mat with the foot flexed. Extend your left arm out to a T. With your right hand, guide the knee across the body for a twist. Only go as far as it feels like it makes sense for your body tonight. Maybe you can go all the way over and have the bent knee on the floor. Maybe the bent knee is more up in the air. Wherever you are, listen to yourself. Use your breath. 
and do what you think is best. If it feels good to turn your head to the left, go for it. Gently unwind back to center, hugging your knees in towards your chest. Gently rock from side to side or front to back. Lower your feet to the floor and then bring your feet to the edges of the mat. Let your knees fall in on one another. You might need to point your toes in towards each other. Arms are down by your sides with your palms face up. This is a nice Shavasana option for those of us with tender low backs. Another option for Shavasana is to bring the soles of the feet together and let your knees be wide. And I guess I've given it away. We're heading into our final resting posture of Shavasana. So you can take the version I just offered with the knees together and the feet wide. You can have your feet together and your knees wide. Or you can take a traditional Shavasana by extending the legs straight out on the mat with your feet mat width apart. And just let your feet relax off to the sides. Everyone should gently nestle their shoulders down on the back. Let your arms be down by your sides with your palms face up, letting the backs of the hands be off your mat. Close your eyes and feel this firm connection between the floor and the points on your body. Let all of those connections grow roots. With every exhale, allowing yourself to be more connected, melting a little bit further into your mat. Slowly allow your breath to deepen. And let some movement return back into your toes and your fingers. On your next inhale, reach your arms up overhead and extend your legs out nice and long for one last long stretch. Think about this idea of root to rise. So from the soles of your feet all the way up through the body, out through the fingertips, creating space, finding breath. Bring your knees in towards your chest as you roll onto your right side. Using as little effort as possible and keeping your eyes closed, rise on up to a seat, sitting up nice and tall, as we did in the beginning. Align the ears over the shoulders, over the hips. And when you find your seat, bring your palms together in prayer in front of your heart. I'm so grateful that you showed up to practice tonight. And I hope that you had some fun with this idea of um, rooting down in order to grow and rise up. Um, 
that little crocus in my backyard is very inspirational, but I also think that uh, all of us are in a place right now where we're looking for an opportunity to really get a nice firm base beneath us as we uh, move on to whatever is next. So we'll close tonight by chanting the sound of Om, and we'll chant it just one time. Take a full exhale, and a full inhale for Om. The light in me honors and acknowledges the light in each of you with great respect. Namaste. Thanks so much for coming, everybody. It is uh, such an honor to be able to be here and practice with you. Uh, feel free to share the link with your friends. We'll be doing it again next week. Uh, the more, the merrier. But I hope that you're feeling a little bit more grounded and a little bit more strong so you can move through the rest of your week. Thanks to Ollie uh, and to the CDE folks. Until next time, take care. <laughs>